So I am not a super technical guy. Last year, I struggled to change my first dually tire. You know how to do this? Uh, in theory. <laughs> when our awning broke, I had to run through the campground looking for help. And when it comes to building a bunk for my kid, I'm giving my friend Scott a call. Aww. There you go. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> an arm or a leg. But today's upgrades don't require superpowers, and for the most part, they're an hour or less to do. And the best part, these small projects can have a huge impact on your next RV adventure. We're Marissa, Nathan, Hensley, and JJ. We sold our house in 2015 and moved into an RV full time to live a life of less junk, more journey. Life is a journey. Let go and get going. What's up, fellow journeyers? So today we're gonna to show you guys some RV upgrades that are so easy, even a caveman can do it. Marissa told me that was too old, I shouldn't do that. You just <laughs> aged yourself. <laughs> that are so easy, yeah. even LJMJ can do it. Oh, there How about you that? go. There we go. We wanna focus on DIY upgrades we have not shown before, but if you want to check out the ones we have shown in the past, like oxygenic shower head, upgraded outside porch area, cube storage in the bunk room, vent covers for the fans, sink cover cutting board, the auxiliary fuel tank on the truck, bed rails for JJ's bed, and even a DIY lithium install. We'll link to those in the description. So first DIY upgrade slash project starts right behind us here in the master bedroom. Now, Surprisingly enough, this might seem simple, but if you're in an RV and you have a broom, a mop, a door, those are probably pretty common things in an <laughs> RV. Like you're always looking for places for those things to go. And you're always like, seems like we're fighting with these doors. Mm -hmm. So we did kind of all in one with this. Right, Marissa's gonna give the tour of our door. <laughs> have we ever done a door tour? I have we, never done a door tour. Actually, we've done the, uh, the sliding door tour. Right. Ah! <laughs> ah! If you're, using the mop and the broom a lot in an RV. It's just a lot of traffic in a small space. So Nathan come up with the, this idea here to put it behind the door. Nobody sees behind the door, right? Well, and the way they design, so you've got this, um, I'm not even sure what's going on here, if that's the, but anyways, there's that extra space there. And so that gives us room to put that behind the door mm -hmm. and the door still closes all the way. So this just drapes on top of the door. It doesn't stop the door from opening and closing and it gives us extra spots to hang things. And this door closes just fine with all this going on. But to me, because maybe this is my OCD or what, I don't know. But without this, because you're rarely always perfectly level. And even if you are, the door seems to like slowly swing closed or swing open. You, it was driving me nuts. I installed this. So I've just got this epoxy to this spot right here. And you'll notice on the bottom corner of the door, I've got another magnet. So Marissa will show you the magic here. When that door closes. It stays shut. It stays shut. <laughs> Revolutionary. It's right? so simple, but it's like <laughs> life changing that our door would constantly flip open. And so just having just a tiny little magnet to catch it keeps our door open, it's wonderful. Now behind the scenes of a lot of this DIY stuff that we're showing you, um, it doesn't always just fall right into place. Sometimes there is some trial and error, sometimes we purchase things that work, sometimes we purchase things that don't. Next thing I wanna show you guys is an install is um, hopefully gonna be the right way to do this because we already tried the way that didn't work. So with our e-bikes, I attempted to fold the bikes, put them into plastic tubs, and then store those tubs under the RV because I saw on YouTube where people had put them in plastic tubs. And everything you see on YouTube is true and easy and accurate, right? As you can see, I took everything out of the bay over here to see if I could get the bikes to fit in here. Now I did manage to get it in on this side, but I had to angle it almost all the way sideways, get it in, flip it back up. And still best case scenario, by the time I get two of these bikes in here, I mean, it's like the whole bay. <laughs> like I'm back to storing a bag of nachos or something in here. So I don't know, I don't know what we're gonna do. And so that didn't work. And so plan B, since RVing has blown up, e-bikes have blown up, and there's <laughs> like, there's no racks out there. You can't even like buy a rack for an e-bike. This company came out with a rack, RV full time. I was looking at the Hollywood ones, the Swagman, you know, the companies I've seen before all sold out. This supposedly holds 200 pounds. It's supposed to be able to be put into a two inch hitch behind a fifth wheeler travel trailer. We'll see. <laughs> 
I'm going to be the guinea pig for you guys because this thing was 120 bucks from Walmart shipped. Took it like two days to get here compared to the other ones are all like four or six hundred it's not and it's not even the price like i would have paid the price they're just not in stock because if you can get a hitch for 120 that does what a hitch for 600 does why would you not do that hmm. okay so initial impression i haven't put together a lot of bike racks but it feels Pretty sturdy, definitely 120 bucks sturdy. I am curious, you guys that know more about this than me, I don't need to fold this up. And I have noticed a lot of these that are meant to go in the back of an RV just don't fold up because it makes it more secure. So if you have a quick, easy way without me having to get a welder <laughs> to like secure this more, like, cause I think that would be the point of failure would be my best guess. That's on the radar, at least. I'm gonna keep an eye on that. Feels pretty sturdy, is initial impressions, so. The last piece of this puzzle is this two bike XL Team Obsidian like uh, bike cover things. I don't know, see how it does long term. <laughs> Seems kind of, uh, I guess I just pictured it being a little more snug. Like out of sight, out of mind is huge with RVing. Generator, bikes, anything. If you can cover it and keep people from thinking about it, <laughs> it definitely helps with the likelihood it's going to be stolen or messed with. Did you know you can upgrade your toilet seats? <laughs> for us, we added this for the kids. Voila, we used to have the like ones that went onto the toilet and then we were always having to move it on and off. It was just extra um, space. So this is a little magnetized extra small seat for the kids. So it's out of the way when the kids don't need it. And if the kids do need it, kid potty seat on hand. We actually met friends that even upgraded their whole toilet. So you can get one that the water goes all the way around when you flush. Does ours do that? No, it doesn't. It only comes from so one it point. only... Yeah, it's pretty weak. It only comes from one spot. Yeah. <laughs> and when you're in an RV that requires a lot of cleaning sometimes. You have to scrub constantly. Uh, yeah. With that going on. But you can upgrade the whole toilet that it has water that goes all the way around. Maybe little known fact, a lot of stuff in an RV, you can actually put residential things in the mm -hmm. RV. You gotta watch the weight, maybe the connections, but the toilet's on that list of things you can upgrade residential if you want to. Okay, so if you work from your RV, which I know a lot of you guys do, or you may need to at some point, that was a big deal for why we chose this RV. Look at, look at how much floor space. So we've got a ton, the 2021 model and up, the slide started going another, I think, eight inches yeah. back. So we've got eight more inches here. I consider this a project in and of itself because I'm just in here so often. This is like version two. Version one was actually nothing more than this. Standing. So, so this is, yeah. So this was version one. It's kind of a mess, but yeah, basically the laptop would sit on that and I would work without a pad or anything like that. This is all I would use. You know, if you're trading stocks, you do a lot of code. There, there are reasons to have giant screens, maybe multiple screens. But for me, surprisingly enough, we do all our editing on whatever's 15.4 inch Mac book. And that's it, because that gives me flexibility no matter where we're at. I can take this with me and I can still continue to work on that. And when I'm here, I could have the option of plugging it into a monitor. So this is like something to think about too if you're looking for an awesome workspace. We've got so much floor space. I could probably have some sort of convertible stand-up desk with a laptop on it or the keyboard here and comfortably stand and work with the TV or multiple TVs. Like you could have a pretty nice, I could have dual monitors up here or something if I wanted to, giant ones that are eye level standing wise. And then if I ever get tired, I'll just sit with this setup you know, I'll sit and bring my laptop off temporarily just while I sit and sort of relax and then I'll stand back up. So the standing stuff takes a little bit of used to, but if you can stand and work in an RV, it gives you a lot of flexibility. I've got a little trackpad I like to use. I put my wrist here. Um, I'm starting to feel it in my wrist just a little bit from all the work with that. So that's why I had to go from this to this more often. You got this fancy mat too. Yes, I do. I also have a stand up gel mat. And so over here on the side, I just added this, which is just from Amazon and you can actually I could add and layer these down a few more if I needed to, to store documents and things like that. So I have quick access to it. And Marissa has allowed me to have, this is my drawer. So I have a few like little <laughs> knickknacks and gadgets and stuff like that in this drawer. And then the other five, you know, that's all her stuff. I require a lot of stuff. It's a big deal 
big deal, especially with small kids. We've learned, you know, when we're working, we really don't want them to see us working because they still have a hard time with that separation. And adult, adults can too. It's just nice to have somewhere you can go to close the door, say I'm in work mode and have that separation from everybody else. So we're not the only ones with projects going on. Hensley also has a project of her own. She's dressed up, ready to give us a tour. You ready to show us what you got here? Mm -hmm. This is a playhouse. A playhouse for you, for Pico, or what? Everybody. Everybody? Pico, Pico, you gonna do it? You change your mind? Pico, you wanna go inside? No? Welcome, so that's your welcome mat? This mat is supposed to go up and down for a door, but JJ broke it a lot. JJ. <laughs> we have some paintings on the top with some gems. I painted white clouds and then I put gemstones on it to make it look shiny. Untie this. All right. Let me see it through the window. There you go. Hey, <laughs> girl. <laughs> so this has been on the honeydew list for a long time. <laughs> Marissa, I love you. I finally got to do the water filter. I do not have the endless hot water heater <laughs> yet. That's, that's the other like big thing on the honeydew list that just keeps conveniently coming up in conversations. So yeah, we have had um, an Acuva before. It was not this exact model. I think it was like the 1.0 or something like that. The big difference between the 1.0 and the 2.0 is basically the water flow. We wanted more water flow with this model because typically when you install this, you also install a secondary faucet. We did not really want there you go, you can see it now. <laughs> Did not really want the chrome faucet to go with our black faucet that we already have here. And yeah, I know there's options as far as like, we could swap that one out with the chrome one, or maybe we could paint this one. I don't know, probably be a good idea. So we opted instead, and again, we'll be a guinea pig for you guys to see if this is a good idea or not, to see what it does to the flow of the main faucet. We're gonna tie this in to the main faucet and not have the secondary faucet and see how it goes. It is an option with this, so it's not like unheard of for that to happen. And this can be used in a home too, but like in an RV, the amount of space something takes up is like with the LED in it. And then it does have a secondary filter that you also hook up, I think for taste or maybe to get out some of the bigger stuff to start with. So that's that's when this is installed, like that, that's it. And so why would you wanna spend 500 bucks on something like this or like a reverse osmosis filter over just using say like the Camco ones or the ones you can put like uh, just attach outside of your RV or even like a bread water filter in the refrigerator. Basically you get what you pay for it. So like if you get a filter for 20 bucks, 40 bucks, it's probably only going to be for taste primarily. You know, I might filter out a little bit of the other stuff versus you start getting to like a three, four or $500 range. And then at that point, cause this has a taste filter with it too, you still get the taste stuff, but it's filtering out bacteria like 99.9%. .9%. So if you go somewhere that has water that can make you sick, uh, if you want to drink directly out of your water tank, we're all about with the decisions we make and the projects we take on, one less thing <laughs> to think about is nice when it comes to RVing. Some trash needs to come out. Trash bags out. So the plan is to tie into the cold water and mount everything over here-ish. Marissa is going to kill me if there's dirty dishes in the sink while I did this video, but uh, probably going to need two of these. So I'm sitting here trying to figure out where everything needs to go and yet still be able to fit the trash can in here. And it's not easy, but one of the reasons we bought this over say reverse osmosis is if you can imagine like where would that go <laughs> inside of this space? I'm not saying you couldn't figure somewhere out maybe, but definitely easier to fit this in this than like, you know, canisters for reverse osmosis and stuff. So probably less power used as well. This definitely uses less water than reverse osmosis. I've heard people boondocking with that system set up and it's just like chugging through the water. We'll get it in here. We'll angle it around, figure it out. Two hours later. <laughs> so what happened here? I didn't, uh, I didn't get it. <laughs> so the honeydew list will be complete one day but probably not today. So what went wrong with the install? Really one thing, and that one thing was my bad. So when you order the Acuva kit to do this install, you can do either the 12 volt version, which is what I ordered, or you can do the 120 volt version, which would essentially just plug into a standard plug. So when I ordered this kit, I looked and I thought, oh, we got 12 volt on the island. I'll just tie into that 12 volt. Uh, that 12 volt is on a switch, and that switch is all the way over here. 
and this island. Well, this island is an island. <laughs> so like getting 12 volt to the island, not that it can't be done, but it's not as easy as getting 12 volt, like say from here to here on the side. That 12 volt is tied into this switch, which also controls this light and the LEDs under here. So we don't want the water filter to only work when those lights are on and that switch is on. We want it to work all the time. So now I'm gonna have to order the correct plug that'll tie into the 120 instead of 12 volt. We're leaving in two days. It is not gonna get here. I am not gonna get this installed because we are a busy bunch of LJMJers getting out of here and heading to Indiana. Marissa, I love you. I will get this water filter in. In the meantime, if you guys want to see more projects, we have a playlist with a few of those set up that you can check out. There'll be links to all the stuff we mentioned in this video in the description below. Until next time, we'll catch you guys later.